The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the week of the solar eclipse and new moon. That'll be on Thursday and Friday. Guess what? We have Chinese New Year, the year of the dog. We'll go into that uh, on Friday. That's a very important, uh, one of the important animals of the uh, Chinese uh, New Year. But today we're going to have... Norm Winsky from Astro Cycles as our guest at the break. Uh, but first, we're going to take a look at the DAX index like we always do. As you can see, we had this big move down. We're having a little bit of a bounce this morning. And how much the bounce we're going to get, who knows? We're going to have some wild volatility that I'm going to discuss uh, right after we take a look at the uh, picture of the FTSE because that's the one that I think is uh, – Probably the easiest to look at. We had that huge ABCD up there at the uh, 7,800 level. We broke 10%, just a tad over that. Uh, now we're having a little bit of a bounce, and how much of a bounce we get will determine, you know, what happens to this next day in the market. Folks, uh, I don't know if you have been, well, I'm sure you've been seeing it in the news, but, you know, we had two 1,000 point drops. This past uh, week uh, in the um, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, actually one of the drops went 1,600 points uh, from high to low, and then we had another 1,000-point drop. And then what we do, we had a 1,000-point rally from Friday into uh, uh, the high that we're having today. Now, these big gap ups, uh, you know, they're – well, they're they're going to be more and more common, I'm afraid, because volatility is here to stay, and how much it's going to be here for how long we'll have to wait and see. But the fact that it's had the the biggest move ever last week uh, really is a a sign that I think volatility has come up. You know, the best the one of the best trades over the last five years is to sell volatility, and uh, that trade uh, might be over. I noticed this morning on CNBC excuse me, on Bloomberg, uh, one of the um, head people at Citibank said the best trade would be to uh, sell uh, volatility. And um, uh, I have to really, really think that one because you can see how quickly some of these things move and it's very hard to uh, uh, to expose yourself to that much risk when we do have these big moves. Now, We've been up as high as 320 points in the Dow this morning. Uh, the low we had uh, on Friday was down about 600, so we've had another 1,000-point rally. So we're starting to see these things coming more and more often, so we'll see you know, what happens. But my assumption is, is that we made some type of a major bottom down here uh, in the stock market uh, on uh, um, uh, <laughs> on Friday, let me uh, let me just go over what's really happened here. Um, let me just pull this up so we can take a quick look at it. This is uh, since 2009, folks. This these are the corrections that we've had since 2009. You notice in 2010 we had a 16% correction. In 2011 we had a 19% correction. In 2015 we had two corrections. Well, one was um, 2015 was 12 percent, and then we had a 13 percent one. That that was the big move. If you remember, we were very very bullish uh, coming into that uh, uh, January. It's actually uh, is late December uh, of um, excuse me. It was January of 2016. We made that double bottom. Uh, that was a beautiful A B C D pattern over the previous. Uh, a few uh, years, and you know that was the very first ABCD pattern that we actually had during that whole move. Uh, we never really had one other than that one. Uh, that was over a period of uh, 
seven years, and believe me, that's very, very unusual. Now we've had a little bit more than a 10% correction uh, as that occurred uh, this past two weeks, starting on um, you know January uh, the 29th. Yeah, it, you're exactly right. It's spot on, 11.8%. Each one of the indices has been a little bit differently, uh, different, but all of them have been very, very close to that. Now. The thing that we want to watch is what really happened, you know, to the market uh, on uh, on Friday because it was really important. And from my perspective, let let's just take a quick look here at the New York Stock Exchange Index, which is the one that uh, I follow uh, the most closely. Hold on just a second here, as far as a technical part. Let's get up to this level right here. You'll notice that. Uh, uh, from the high we made back on the 29th, the low that we made on Friday, remember, we made a lower low on Friday than we did on Tuesday, folks. We remember Tuesday, we went up Wednesday, and we came down hard Thursday and Friday. Do you realize that the S&P 500 did not make a new low from Tuesday? I don't know if you folks realize that, but if you follow your charts, double check it because we did not make a new low. It came down and came very, very close to it. At uh, 25, 29 was the low on Tuesday, and 25, 30 and a half was the low on Friday. And from that level, you know, it had the uh, the big the big sell off. Now, remember the the thing that's let me, let me go back to if you'll pay attention here and look at the low. I, I'm not trying to teach you. I'm just trying to give you some information. If you look at that low back on the solar eclipse that we had back in August, that was a 78% retracement spot on to the low that we made on Friday. And if you go back to the low that we made at the beginning of um, the year, that was a 61% retracement of that move. So we had two major ratios coming together at the same time. And not only that, but we didn't have confirmation in the S&P 500. That is highly indicative that we're probably going to get a pretty good rally. Remember, we've got this solar eclipse and new moon coming in on Thursday. So this might be that four-day rally that we're, that we're possibly looking for. So we'll be able to see, you know, if that's going to happen or not. Someone's asked me, is the high end for the year? Boys and girls, I don't know that. But I do feel very strongly that uh, if you get, uh, we'll cover Bitcoin in just a second, folks. And uh, if, you, if you'll just um, wait to see what happens here, because if we take out those lows that we made uh, on Monday, Let's try it again, Larry. On Friday, then I think we, we've made the high in at least for the next six months. And um, we'll, we'll see what happens, you know, from that level. Uh, but, you know, this, is a, this has been a most uh, uh, interesting time in stock. So we have to be, uh, you know, at least flexible to kind of keep an eye on it because it's going to be interesting to see if it does that. But that cycle low uh, coming in on the eclipse in August uh, really uh, helps understand what's happening and and like jim twentyman said do the work yourself go back and look at the dow jones look at the nasdaq what it did and then and then look at the russell what it did look at i cover all these in the newsletter because these are the ones that uh you know give you an idea of what's really happening with the market and it's giving you a pretty good idea that we hit some type of a major bottom there on friday now that might not last very long but that was a pretty substantial bottom and we'll be able to uh, watch it. Mr. Z, you're absolutely right. 64.31 on that NASDAQ. You spot got that one right. Eight seven, yes, you do most of the time. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and someone's asked us to take a look at Bitcoin. So I posted the uh, the chart comes from our good friend John Jameson of the Jameson Letter. If you'll notice here, you'll notice those percentages that you see on the chart with those spikes. Those are the volume spikes. Now, remember, the volume that we have in Bitcoin, it trades 24 hours a day, seven days a week from a whole bunch of different exchanges. Whether this volume is going to be accurate or not, I don't know, but it is reported as that. But the thing to look at, you can see the big ABCD that led to the high that we had right back at the beginning of the year. And then we've had these lower highs. And you can see the market has fallen uh, very nicely as far as a technical break basis. We just missed the 61% the retracement down there at uh, uh, just under 6,000. It needed to get to about 55 Hundred and now we've rallied uh, all the way up to the uh, 10,000 level. Now, the only way Bitcoin is going to be bullish again, folks, is to take out those highs at uh, 19 to 20,000 that we had when the uh, Bitcoin was brought into the CME. The volume on the CME thus far has still been uh, extremely um, uh, quiet. Uh, we're up to about 1,500 open interest now. In the CME contracts for Bitcoin, really, that's a very, very slow start, but I'm sure that is going to uh, to pick up uh, over time. So let's sort of uh, pay attention to that. I do want to show you one other chart that a lot of you folks don't uh, look at very often, and that is the uh, transportation index. This is a real interesting one because if we take a look at this uh, Hold on. Yes, he does do that. He'll be coming out with that very soon, giving his buys and sells. Uh, he follows a whole bunch of cryptocurrencies. But this is the transports, Dow transports. As you can see here, uh, we were talking about, uh, you know, what happened with the other indices as far as hitting perfect numbers. And you can see here that the uh, transportation index hit the exact 78 percent 
from the November low of 2017, and it was spot on to the 61% retracement of the low of the year back in May. Folks, that's a really important number. So uh, if you'll watch this, uh, we might get a rally up to that 20-man line, uh, which is up another uh, 4 or 5%. And if that takes about four or five days to get there and doesn't get any higher, that would be a very indi good indication for a potential uh, sale. So uh, let's uh, remember that. Remember the volatility we have. Just this morning, folks, we've had a 60-point move uh, in the S&P. It's rallied 120 points off the bottom on Friday. And then just since last night, we moved, uh, we've moved 30 points up and 30 points down. And it's not over yet. So, uh, you know, watch it if it gets down on the day. Uh, the 382 retracement on that S&P comes in around, uh, I believe, 2620. So, um, you know, keep an eye on that. That would be down about 30-some uh, handle or 40-some handles from the high. So sort of watch that. That would be very, very interesting to see it. But those numbers that we hit on Friday, um, those, those are really important numbers. Thank you, Maria. That's good. Yet uh, Dudette says it's 2606, and spot on, that is it. So let's uh, move on here. I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, Deutsche Bank because this is very important uh, from a fundamental, uh, well, not fundamental, from, from information standpoint. It's more technical than anything else because I don't understand the fundamentals. But if you look here at Deutsche Bank, uh, going back over the past year, uh, we've made a 61% retracement. Here again, there's that 61% retracement again on Friday. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting because the reason why Deutsche Bank should be watched, and we've got a couple people uh, on, at the TFNN family that uh, watch it, especially uh, Mr. TB over in Las Vegas does a great job watching um, Deutsche Bank for us. But take a look at Deutsche Bank on what it, what it's really involved in, folks. This next chart uh, basically shows the, uh, the the tentacles that we have. Which Deutsche Bank? You'll see this is the uh, this is from the IMF, and it shows the Deutsche Bank how it how it affects all the banks in the world. I mean, no other bank has anything like this. I mean, this is really it shows you the counterparty risk that they have, and that is what's really um, that's what's really important here because if something happened to to Deutsche Bank that they couldn't cover, you know, other positions, much like what happened with long-term capital, uh, you would be, uh, we would be looking at something that would make the 2008 uh, bear market look like a uh, dead cat mounts. Anyway, th this is very important to watch Deutsche Bank. The key to Deutsche Bank is if it gets below 11, it's over because uh, this stock used to sell, at, I think, up around 70 or something, and uh, it certainly didn't follow the rest of the market up. And then they had to get, you know, in order to get people to buy it, they had to offer them a 35% discount in January of last year. And what happened? That all that discount is gone. 114, thank you. I didn't think it was that high. Wow. I missed that by by quite a bit. It was 114, and now we're trading it at 16. Hmm, that's a nice little uh, cha uh, turn of events. Remember Citibank, folks. Citibank uh, did pretty much the same thing during the 2008 debacle. You know, uh, they had to do a reverse split on Citibank, or it wouldn't even be trading now. So that was uh, the main thing uh, to look at. That's very good information is to watch that uh, information about John Merriweather. Um, uh, Basil's given us some good information here now on Deutsche Bank. Wow, it was 158 in May of 2007. Wow, and now it's at uh, 16. That's a 90% hickey. Holy cow, boy! I didn't realize that, Basil. I don't have that on my chart. I, I, in fact, I don't even look at it long term. I'm just watching it over the past year. So we'll see if it's going to. Uh, and believe me, if, hey, uh, Maria, if Basil said it was 158, it was 158 because Basil has got a really good eye for these numbers. He's corrected me several times, especially from the July low of uh, 1932. I, I always had that wrong as July 5th, and it was actually July 8th. 
and uh, but he does a great job. But he's he's uh, he's the master. Okay, let's move on here and take a look at a couple other things that we really uh, sort of need to cover, folks. If you follow the natural gas. Uh, take a very close look at natural gas because uh, we're down here at new lows. We've made new lows this morning, but there's a potential here for a possible uh, double bottom in natural gas. This is one that um, you want to watch. I mean, you've got to find a good place, you know, to enter. And the, the secret there is to find ratios that will and patterns that will help you get through. But we've just made uh, new lows just now. Uh, we're trading down at the uh, 155 and change level, I believe, maybe a, a tad below that. So, and we're down uh, 10 days in a row, so it's due for a bounce, you know. But wait for the first bounce, and then, uh, you know, then you can get a chance to, uh, uh, you know, get in without risking very much. Because if you try, if you try to buy it here, you know, the acceleration could occur, and you don't have any place you know, to technically put your stop, so you'd have to use a dollar stop, which is nothing wrong with that, whether it's 1% or 2%, you can certainly do that, but it's better to do it with a pattern that gives you some idea of, uh, you know, where we're at, so we'll see. Uh, okay, we'll see what happens. 877-927-6648. We'll take a look at natural gas at the break. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and I hope we have our good friend Norm Winsky on the line. Norm, are you there? Yes, sir, Larry. Good morning. Can you hear me looking okay? Good, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, I'm going to turn the mic over to you. Your charts will be posted into the um, Tiger uh, TV uh, video, so just go ahead and start out. I have one question for one of our listeners uh, before we start out, and that is on this eclipse that we're going to have here uh, on Thursday, does that is that associated with this uh, phenomenon known as a supermoon? No, sir. Not okay, my knowledge. All right, let's go ahead. You've got the you've got the mic. You have to have the apogee or perigee. I think that only you know, we phase in and phase out of that about every 14 months, and I think we already had that. Okay. Okay. So anyway, uh, let's cut right to the important stuff. Reviewing my my visit here last time on January 29th. Uh, one of the things I talked about was I have uh, a couple of forecasting models. One is the January barometer. As January goes, so goes the year. Then I talked about the, uh, uh, you know, an up up January uh, implies a up year. And uh, and, and also the Super Bowl, that, that's about a seven, has a, statistically a 75% batting average. Uh, the only thing better than that is the Super Bowl indicator. That has an 80% batting average. And so the interesting thing, what I put together is uh, that they're, since they're both predicting the same thing, uh, you get a kind of a heads up uh, several days in advance based on the January barometer. Who should win the Super Bowl? And I said, I'm going out on a limb here and going against the odds and picking the Philadelphia Eagles. And, I, and Larry, I guess uh, the Duke brothers heard that and got on their private jet and flew to Vegas and put down a big bet. Yes, they put $50 on them. I remember I saw it in the news. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, that's kind of a neat thing. I don't know. That's kind of something I've developed here in the last few years. That uh, you know, and so uh, to answer your question a little while ago, uh, based on this indicator so far, we should have we should probably go up and make a higher highs before the year is out. You know. Mm -hmm. Now that's different than the January barometer, though. Is that correct? Well, they're both predicting pretty much the same thing. Now I, I go. Well, we were I, down. I, we were down in January, though. No, we were. We had a big up. Oh, January, January twenty. Oh, star. Oh. Yeah, we talked on the 26th, uh, 29th of that man, weekend. Man, man, man. Judge's but ruling, we i got to understand. You're right, gave, absolutely. As of the 31st of January, we only gave up a small a bit yeah, of the rally, right. January's You're rally. Right. You're right, Norm. Yep, 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 yep. There we go. I understand because we've been battered here for the past 10 days. I understand a little the past two weeks, so you kind of get pr programmed for that, you know, right? All right, anyway, that's an interesting thing. I, I get down in the weeds with these indicators and take them far beyond what anybody else would indicate. I, I like the fractal theory, and uh, in the past years, the Super Bowl, how the scoring pattern was during the game actually forecasted what the stock market would do during the year. That's pretty crazy, but it, it's worked. So anyway, I'll be working on that here over the February, put that in my March letter, you know. Here's my planetary index, sort of my version of Bradley here. The blue line was my forecast in uh, for the month, and the black bar is the Dow Jones 10-minute bars. And so I think, and there's your lunar eclipse. That worked out pretty well. Okay, and I have talked here on the when I was on here on January 29th. I was I came on right at 9:30, right on the opening there, right at that top right there. I said, I think we're topping out. And I talked about how uh, historically lunar eclipses on average work 75% of the time to give you a uh, about an uh, average one and three quarter percent drop on the major indices. I think we probably passed that, surpassed that. <laughs> so anyway, so, now if you want to know why we topped there, one of the three, you know, in addition to the fact that we uh, got, you know, probably extremely overbought, I had a huge cluster of events there over the 26th weekend. And I, to I showed these on here as one. There's one, two, three, four, you know, like three or four different planetary events, plus the eclipse coming up on the overnight of the 30th or early morning of the 31st. Then I also had some mathematical harmonics from the uh, uh, the low of uh, 2009 low that and landed right on uh, that weekend, uh, you know, over the week one over the, on the weekend and one right on Monday, the 29th. There's some more stuff there on my S&P analysis. I do an astrological analysis of past turning points on the S&P 500, and that said the 26th to the 29th had a Fibonacci time cycle land on the 29th, and 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 a big astro window there for the 29th. 
So it's lots and lots of stuff all pointing to that window there for a top. Okay, looking ahead here now, we have the uh, have another had the biggest cluster of the uh, in terms of energy level, biggest cluster of the month started on a Friday afternoon and into this week past weekend, and you might have noticed that we had a big reversal Friday afternoon, Larry. <laughs> yes, and, we did a thousand points. That was really something in just an that, hour too. I mean, my gosh. I'd be like George Her well, Herbert Walker Bush's uh, a thousand a thousand points of light. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay. All right, there we go. I guess we won't be doing presidential humor anymore. All right. So I don't think so. No, that, that, that's what we call a bomb. But I, 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 I drop those all the time, so you're not alone. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Well, Larry, no, I'm sorry. Larry, Larry wouldn't, be, wouldn't be prudent. Wouldn't be prudent. Okay. There we go. All right, so North Node. And so we've got the big cluster here, and the dollar was included in that, and bonds and stocks. And a real interesting planetary lineup here with uh, – Based on astrological, you know, the uh, each sign of the zodiac has what's called a planetary ruler, and it's particularly doubly uh, powerful when a planet lands in its own home sign. And so what we have here is an alignment of Saturn and Neptune over the weekend here in the, each one in their own sign. So that's very unusual. Saturn's in Capricorn, that's its own sign, and Neptune's in Pisces, that's its own sign, but they're aligned by uh, latitude. And so that implies that you should take a look at the crude oil and coffee in particular. All right, so we'll be looking at those in just in a minute. And then we have uh, bu 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 and some more stuff coming up here on the after the close of the 13th. A uh, moderate thing for uh, with uh, Jupiter to the U.S. Neptune. Kind of a moderate positive there for stocks, T-bonds, U.S. dollar, U.S. chart, you know. And then, of course, we have the big solar eclipse coming on uh, right on the bell. Right on the closing bell on uh, Thursday afternoon, uh, Eastern Time. I think it's 4:05 p.m. Then we have some mathematical harmonics here. We had the ninth, and then we have today the 12th. And by the way, happy uh, have a happy uh, Lincoln's birthday. Right uh, there, you go. Yes, today's Abe's birthday. Happy birthday, Abe. There you go. And so here we go. And here's your S&P chart as of uh, last night. You know the Friday close. And we rallied up. There's a possible channel line here. And uh, I noticed that overnight, the futures got to 26.55. I think that's a 3.82 retracement of the whole down move. Almost to the almost spot on there, you know. And but we so, have a question for one of our listeners about gold. Does it have a good trend change day on the 15th? Oh, that's under my window there for the eclipse. Let's go back and look at my uh, different mm -hmm. items to watch for on the eclipse there. Uh, 15th after the close. We have a new moon solar eclipse in Aquarius, and new moons in general, new moons, full moons. You want to watch for financials, grains, and precious metals, and because it's, uh, that would cover gold, and especially because it's in Aquarius, keep an eye on copper, too. Okay. Because Aquarius is connected to uh, copper. <clears throat> so there's your S&P chart. Here's your longer-term chart up till today. Uh, this was following this uh, channel very nicely. Probably, I'm going to guess it broke out of this channel here overnight over the week, over the overnight trading. Probably might, maybe we'll get up to this line here, 26. Well, we're at the, we got to 26.55. And okay, we've got to we go. pay a few bills, Norm. Okay. We'll, we'll be right back with Norm Winsky of Astro Trend, 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member fdic and equal housing lender tfnn has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors 
On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Norm Winsky of AstroTrend. Norm, you want to continue on, but we have a question from one of our listeners, and if you had to put a probability on the stock market of making the high for the year already, what would your probability be? I don't know. I, I, get, I need the, you know, I have these longer term forecast models. So I have to see how things mm -hmm. track here for the next couple months. So, you know, okay, it's, so uh, you in know, a I, couple months, a couple months, you'd have a, a better idea. Absolutely. Okay, you know, it could fine. be Go sometimes ahead, these, man. sometimes these models flip upside down. So, you know, could they, then we'd have a whole different uh, view, you know. I understand, but you know, but I don't get I don't get too worried about what's going to happen months of, uh, you know, out in the future. It's more for kind of more for fun. It's you know, how are we going to make money today or tomorrow? That's what that's my point of view. You got bills to pay today. Fire away, my friend. There you go, S and P five hundred. I was just talking about uh, that uh, on the futures twenty six fifty five. I can't go on the cash maybe twenty six forty five area is uh, resistance there level there. And uh, I think the ideal scenario is if we were to make a high here this morning after the big rally from Friday afternoon, create a big trading range where we would start coming back down. And by Friday, uh, this doesn't mean it's going to happen. Just I think this is kind of an ideal setup. We were to re go back and retest the lows by Thursday afternoon on the eclipse. That would, I think, kind of be an ideal scenario. Then you might be set up for a, a really good low, you know. Just a thing, just idea, you know. Uh, well, one of our listeners has asked if you would just repeat what you just said. All right. I think an ideal scenario, that doesn't mean it's going to occur, but it's kind of like what we'd like to see to to give you a nice setup, you know, if we were to roll over to and make our top here, we either overnight, maybe we've already seen the high overnight here at, on the futures 2655. I think that's a 382 retracement of the whole down move. And if we were to roll over here and work our way lower into Thursday afternoon when we have the eclipse, I think that would be, a, and to retest the lows, I think that would be an ideal scenario. As you pointed out, the last solar eclipse was a low, right? Back mm -hmm. last August, right? That's correct. There you go. All right, so let's go look at the bonds. The bonds are kind of iffy here. You know, the, obviously the market doesn't always accommodate us and give us what we'd like to see. This is the March T bonds on an hourly basis. And so I'm not seeing anything uh, gets, that's uh, real sexy yet here. Right? Now on the mm -hmm. dollar, though, the dollar is a lot clearer, and to my point of view, uh, we got a nice cha we have a nice channel here on this rally we just had but look at that the, the the market seems to be rolling over now and breaking the bottom of that channel and so that's the indication you might be headed back down on the dollar mm -hmm. okay and here's your okay now we also I'll have to talk about coffee unfortunately both the coffee and the yeah, the oils not so much but coffee's kind of mid-range I'd like to see what I'd like to see doesn't mean it's going to happen 
but I'd like to see the coffee have a big down here today to, while we're still in this window and get that down to the lows here because we're we started coming down but we're kind of in the middle so that's not a good setup we like to see the market at these markets at extremes at these key dates you know and they don't they don't always uh, accommodate it. so there's your crude oil had a big low on friday afternoon i think and then a big bounce and now we're at the top of that channel so uh, in some ways uh, maybe we'll see how it uh, acts today you know but if it uh, mm -hmm. you know if you you know I, you and i don't like to buy breakouts you know, you got a, a lot of exposure well, there on breakouts. That's the, under, that's the understatement of the year for me. Yeah, we got the, we're, we're members of the, buy. I, I want to buy it at a wholesale club, you know, right? Uh, that's so right. Anyway, so anyway, so that's, uh, so, you know, it could break out here and then you're going back up or it could, well, I just have to wait and see, you know, this, I'm going to give you a heads up on these markets. What's the, what markets to watch? And they're not, the kind of, the patterns are not quite complete yet. You have to, we'll give it to the, uh, the rest of today, you know. Mm -hmm. Norm, we got a question from one of our listeners. Uh, in the morning, when you get ready to do your trades, do you have a setup of like two or three trades that really, you know, have big uh, green lights on for you? They got to really watch those really close. Do you have uh, a, a situation like that in your trading strategy where you're looking at two or three things really, really closely? Well, we look at where the big energy is. If you take my uh, take my class, take my letter. I've shown that uh, on occasion on your uh, show here, Larry, where I have that calendar, and you look at the numbers there, and the the planets tell you where, when, and where to look. Mm -hmm. And so, just like we had the big, my biggest window of uh, the whole month was starting Friday afternoon into the weekend with my biggest number there for for many markets, including the the stock market and uh, oil and coffee and all these markets. So something yeah. certainly happened on Friday, that's for sure. I, I actually had an aspect right uh, uh, within 12 minutes of the low. Uh, yeah. Actually, a cluster of aspects, a cluster of aspects yeah. and within 12 minutes of the low. All right, so here's your copper coming down here now. And, uh, you know, so what you want, oh, this is where you, I got this up because of the eclipse is in Aquarius. So keep that in mind for Thursday. Go look at my copper. Keep that in mind and, and, and pull, that, pull, up, pull up a copper chart. On Thursday, when we as we near the eclipse to see if it's at some extreme, I ideally probably maybe get it back down here to the, these uh, December lows. That would be sort mm -hmm. of an ideal, you know. And then you'd be buying mm -hmm. against this low, and then you wouldn't have much risk, you know. Alrighty, and uh, just to re I've shown this chart before. This is from last year. Uh, my fractal. Uh, I do these fractals for 27 different markets. Here's the one for the euro. I had the blue bars on here. Published them last February. And then I overlaid the black bars, the actual prices on top of that after the fact to see how that worked out. And that worked out pretty well. And that's a reminder to tell you that I got exciting news, Larry. I now have my 2018 fractal futures uh, uh, all ready to go for uh, for 2018. So I got that for 27 different markets. So when they, if the folks would like to take my free class, I can teach, uh, teach them this in about five to ten minutes. It's very, very simple. I can teach a 10-year-old to do it in, in ten minutes. So there you go. Can you teach and, an eighty-year-old? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm going to do that. I know. I told you I was going to do that. And we'll, we'll we'll get maybe next next month. We'll do that. You know, when I get to get a little more time. All right, moving on ahead here now. We got the free class and the free letter, and it doesn't get any. Uh, can't give any more discounts than that, Larry. Although you know, if you mention Larry's name, uh, Larry saying it, then you can get the double your money back guarantee. It's all free. You know. Sounds fair. So. There you go. So we got the free class, the free letter. Uh, you get a, a, a one-month subscription. I send you out nightly updates after you get through the class. I'm going to go through the letter there and teach you the different uh, my, uh, methods I use, Astro. Mm -hmm. I have advanced Fibonacci time cycles. I have the fractals. And guess what? None of this stuff. Uh, it takes a lot of brain power. If uh, you know, if you made it through grade school, you can do this stuff. It looks like complicated on the surface because mm -hmm. it's uh, you know, so got some terminology you're not familiar with. I just had a guy who knew nothing uh, a few days ago, and he went through my class, and now he's talking like a, a veteran, you know. Right? So you know, it's uh, I've proven this over and over again. I have people who take my class, and they're making money within a few days. So not everybody's going to do that. You got to be a disciplined person, have good risk management. But if you do all that, this will I think greatly aid you improve your market time. So uh, we have a question. Qu we, have, we have a question for one of our listeners. We've just had a uh, 20 uh, 28 point move down in the S and P, and the 28 move. Up a point S up in the S and P. His question is: Is this going to abate, or is this volatility going to be with us for quite some time? 
Mm, I think it'll gradually uh, it'll calm down a bit, don't you, Larry? I mean, you know, I don't know it's going to be crazy. <laughs> I certainly like hope so. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I think I think that one you know one indication of a coming crash is when you get a constant you know a consistent volatility like that, and you know, mm. I don't I don't the, think we're quite the, I don't yeah, quite think we're yeah. quite there yet. It might take yeah. uh, might take a, a maybe another year or so before we get to the crash mode you know you know we're in the eighth year of the decade they've been the old model the seventh year of the decade was the bad one uh, mm -hmm. this could be it uh, this fall you know listen norm thanks for joining us my friend and we'll have you on again soon okay all right looking forward to hearing the, from the folks there there's my contact information there at the bottom of the page that's on the screen thanks a lot norm norm winsky of astro trend of naples florida 877-927-6648. Stay tuned. You don't buy into that nonsense, do you? You know, you can't time the markets. I didn't. And in 2006, I set out on a mission to do just that. I began by surrounding myself with the greats like Tom O'Brien, Larry Pesavento, David White, and Basil Chapman. I read countless books and even looked to the moon and planets for answers. Now, we both know that trading is 80% mental. So I learned the exact tools that Tony Robbins uses to overcome fear. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And last March, the folks at Timer's Digest began tracking my newsletter signals, which through January 18th, 2018 placed me as the number one gold timer for that exact time frame. Now, I can't officially be recognized until Timers Digest has a full year of signals, but clearly, I've learned how to time the markets, and I'd like to teach you how to do that as well. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain access to my live and archive workshops where I show you the exact same patterns that earn me this number one ranking. If you're looking for great market calls and an education, sign up for Mastering Probability today at TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I'm going to change course here a little bit because we have something important going on in the grain markets this morning. We have a pretty strong move upward. I've posted the chart for the soybean meal that we use in our futures letter each week. And as you can see, we've been uh, quite friendly to this for quite some time. And uh, it is breaking out to the upside. We're trading substantially above the 350 uh, level now. And uh, that tells us we're probably going to go up to about 364, which will be a ABCD structure. And remember, we have this eclipse coming in here on Thursday. So sometime in that time frame between Wednesday and Friday, we'll probably be looking at a uh, retracement level in some of these grains. But right now, 
they are certainly acting, uh, you know, very, very nicely uh, to the upside, which uh, technically is pretty much what they were supposed to do. Um, keep an eye on the um, the S and P today, folks, at that 2606 uh, level, uh, 2609. That's a th uh, 382 retracement. Uh, I believe of the uh, move down, of the move up from uh, 130 uh, higher, so that would bring you down to just to right about that level uh, to take a look at it, and it should hold that level. Uh, I believe that we've made a pretty strong indication of a major bottom here in stocks, at least from a short-term basis. But if we go below those lows of Friday now, folks, this is really negative. So uh, keep in mind that any market can go uh, up a 1,000 and down a 1,000 could now move, you know, substantially uh, beyond that. Remember, our biggest move now in the Dow has been 1,600 points. And if we multiply that, you know, by 1.618, you're going to get 2,600. So we're probably going to see a 2,600 either up or down move. And remember that markets are a little more fragile on the downside because fear is a greater emotion than greed. You'll probably see a 2,600 on the downside so and this does have political implications because uh, you know uh, the news uh, you know brings everybody's uh, opinions into the market so live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Go get them, folks.